meaning you cannot, it cannot be any more divided, as simple as that. Okay. So that's why when we say, that's why when we say to you, okay, hold on a second, it has to be, it has to be sufficient, meaning not depending on nothing, yes. except, yeah, that's the point. Okay. So then, then, then in that case, it will fulfill the condition is all powerful. And it, it will fulfill, it has a will. Uh, this divine has had a will yeah. to decide things, meaning there is no one above him in terms of bureaucracy you, you to tell him what you should do and what you should do. You understand? You, you so now he will continue, inshallah. Yeah. Yeah. So, you see, some people say who defines this? These are characteristics that all intuitively and rationally can it arrive makes sense at. To me. It makes yeah? sense to me. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, like, yeah, when Jesus was born, like that, that came from the Father, right? That's what it was written in the but, Bible. His but some, Mary some and, might, some and might the say, some might say, even before the creation of the universe, the Son, God, the Son existed, and yeah, He was eternal, so eternally, verse, eternally begotten. But eternally begotten is is an action of begetting. So this okay. action is eternally dependent on the Father. Yeah. Even worse, eternally dependent Wait. on the Father. Let's see that again. The action of begetting to take place to differentiate between the Father and the Son. Because if there is a difference between the Father and the Son, and the difference arose due to begetting, one beget the other. But they say this is atemporal begetting. Time wasn't involved. So it's not like, because if you have a time involved, immediately know the one who is begotten is totally contingent on the Father, totally dependent on the Father. So the way they move around this problem, they say, look, there was no time involved, it's atemporal, eternally begotten, but the problem still subsides. The action of begetting happened. Because it's an action, eternal dependency. So now you have a, a being or a person or an entity who is eternally dependent. Any being who is dependent partially, eternally, for a limited time or all the time is not the definition of the old according to who? According to who? According to anyone that's with a true. rational inquiry. That's according to Islamic theology. No, no, okay, let's that's, start again. Wait, 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 wait. That's not according uh, to the most reputable philosophers. Hang on. Uh, let's start again. Let's start again. Let's start again. Let's start again. And this is the Christian bias comes in because they know the second person of the Trinity does not fulfill a maximally perfect being. Yes, it does. Yep. So the third one does. Which one? No, no, the second and the yeah, third yeah, yeah. don't. They both don't. They don't, don't. Okay. don't. So and that is why the Christian philosophers today are trying to somehow get away. Look, okay, let me ask you again. Let me ask you again. Do you think a being that is dependent can be called maximally perfect? Yes. How? Also, you're, you're complaining terms, so we don't think that Jesus is a being. I'm not talking about Jesus. Am oh, I no, talking no. about Jesus in my time? I know, I know, but you're missing. I'm saying a being, so I haven't defined what a being is. Okay. Neither have I defined a person. Uh, I, we know what perfect is. Free from all imperfections and weaknesses. Right, sure. A being who is dependent on someone or something else, is that a maximally perfect being? Or is there a being with more perfect than that being? It can be maximally perfect. So that means, are you saying? Well, it's not so, so let's understand that. Perfect, like so let, let me let me let me understand it very clearly here. Sense. So, like what he I'm says. getting lost in perfect okay, okay. sense now. But so, you guys carry on. I'll, no, I'll no, 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 no. Because I want to continue speaking to you because I've spoken to him before. We can continue later, but you can join it. Yeah, sure. I don't, I don't if you have real. if you have a being who is absolute without any deficiencies, any weaknesses, and you have a being who has deficiencies and weaknesses, who is more perfect? Probably that one. Exactly. So, so any being who is dependent and any being who is independent, you know who is perfect and who That's is not perfect. That's a fallacy. The one who is dependent, like your bike, is not more perfect than the creator. Because the creator, by definition, God is independent and the bike is dependent. So how can you say a dependent thing or an object or a being or an entity or a person can be likewise the same as an independent being. Because you, you, you circularly presuppose that dependence is a weakness which you've never substantiated. Do you see? In your, okay. wait, wait, in your argument, Let's you hear said, it. is a weaker yeah, being, is one that has weaknesses, le lesser than a one that does not have weaknesses. Go ahead. I agree with that, obviously, of course. The one that has weaknesses is lesser, right? But you're implicitly assuming that dependence is a weakness. I'm asking you now, without circularly okay. presupposing it, substantiate I will do that now. dependence Oh, no, I think we left that argument last time. Is, is a weakness. Yeah, yeah, wait, you, wait, wait, wait. You, you made your point. Five seconds, five yeah. seconds. 
not an example of dependence, not a specific example. I mean, dependence in principle is a weakness. There exactly. Is a huge difference exactly. Those two things. Which, so philo let me, let me, let so which philosopher? Yeah, which philosopher? Which philosopher? Okay, let we'll me, come back to that. Me, let me because you talk about yeah? philosophy, we'll talk about yeah, philosophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Listen, uh, let me tell you something. Yeah. The simple thing. We all, me, us, and you, we agree. Is God all powerful? Yes. In principle, yes. What do you mean in principle? Not in everything. So in some other, what do you mean by in principle? In principle. Because I, I like, I like the, the, you know, the, the things which is clear. When you say in principle, meaning there are things that He's not all powerful. Is no, that, no, are no, you no. saying this? In principle means that you're talking about the, the proper philosophical definition of what it means to be. Simple like that. We we all agree and mention the Bible, mention the Quran that God is all powerful. Yes. So if you say He's all powerful, can now when you say He's all powerful, can God become not all powerful at certain point? Yes. Okay, that's wait, wait, wait. that's, not, no, no, that's the point. You see here. That's the point here. See, you see here. That's the Christian problem. That's the, that's the Christian, Christian problem. problem. You see here. When you say he, they're saying like this here. They're saying no, God is all powerful, but sometimes He chooses not to be all powerful. Can I Meaning, parody this? Sometimes He will leave the power and become weak. Islam has this problem. Well, one as second. One second. Islam has this one second. Problem. Uh, yeah, yeah, one second. We'll come to Islam. Okay. Let's talk about Christianity. Okay. So sometimes God will will choose not to be all powerful, so He'll become weak. Now, sometimes instead of his, is God Almighty, they would say yes. But Jesus wasn't Almighty because he was humiliated on earth. People, they hit him, they tortured him, and according to him, they killed him. Meaning, he's not all powerful at that point. Not adding to this, when we say to them, okay, is God is all knowing? So they say yes, God is all knowing. Now, when it comes to Jesus, Jesus is ignorant of certain things, which means he's not all knowing. So, so there are the definition of Jesus to be a divine that literally all the conditions that even the Christian and the Muslims and everyone they agree about the definition of divine, they literally they will withdraw all of these conditions when it comes to Jesus. You see the point? That shows that shows here that shows inconsistency in terms in terms of define. Defining the divine. Let's, I will ask you. What let, is the divine? Let, let's come back to you. Let's come back to you. Do you agree a being is more perfect in the attributes and characteristics, the essential characteristics that we agreed earlier? One who is dependent on someone else or one who is independent? Who who is more perfect and more absolute in, in So so a mom is more perfect than the baby? That's what you're saying. No, no, no. no. When it comes to say, you've got two concepts of God. One God relies on someone else to do things. We're not saying that though. I'm not talking about your God. Okay. Right? That's not so one God, God right. one God has to do, actually has to do everything that God tells him to do. Totally dependent. Takes orders. And in fact, cannot, cannot do anything apart from what that other God tells him to do. And the other God is totally, totally sovereign does things what he wills. Which one do you think is maximally perfect? You then have two gods. Exactly, we you only have, have two one gods. God. Which one is maximally perfect? You've the one who's dependent? Well, we're asking, let us ask this gentleman. Go ahead. You know, we only have one God. Okay, let him think. Yeah, uh, you can speak to him, but I want to continue this gentleman. Yeah, Even your intuition will tell you, the one who's sovereign, yes. not the one who's dependent. Yes. So, you don't, I don't need to go to a reputable scholar saying, no, this bike can be equally perfect with an independent creator. I don't need a quotation from any, a reputable scholar no, or a, a philosopher. No, no. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I cannot speak to someone who says it is possible equally that you have this bike who is dependent no, on the equal footing on someone who is independent. That's not what I said. So now, if you have a God concept, concept of God, in which one God is dependent and the other is not, you would say the one who is dependent cannot be even qualified to be God. Why? By definition, God has to be independent. Why? Why? Prove it. Oh, okay. He's never actually demonstrated that. Look, look, look. I don't need to he's demonstrate to you. Look. And he's relied on it being apparently intuitive, intuitive from an Islamic paradigm. Is he's he's never he can't brother, brother, this one no reputable philosophy of religion buys into Do you see the problem? He's relying on what? Philosophy it has religion. to be reputable. Which reputable philosopher that you have read philosophy said religion. God can be dependent? Linda Zagzewski. And he says God can she, be dependent? She, yes. She said God can be dependent? Yes. Okay, that's the God that I'm not going to worship and you're going to want to worship. Okay. And you're not going to worship. Okay. You know why? No, 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 no. I agree. So you have a reputable scholar 
who's repeat his question from me. Why? Because you have a scholar who is saying, oh, a god that is dependent like a bike, who is dependent, is worthy of worship. Look, a, would you really worship a god? Let me ask you this question. Who is dependent on someone else? Do you think that god is worthy of worship? That god itself is dependent on someone else? Please think, please think. But you would know when you do think and you'll come to this conclusion that it is not making any sense for a rational human being, reasonable human being, to take a God as God when that being is dependent. Because God by definition has to be self-sufficient. If you say God has been given power, if you give power to someone and they're dependent on someone to give them power, that's what dependence is. So you receive power, you receive authority, you receive the thing to do, you receive knowledge. You are fully dependent on someone else to give you this. That means someone is greater than you. That's what it means. Dependence means the one who doesn't depend on anyone is greater than you. So like, so like someone like, let's say, someone like Einstein, he would have been like read books and like learned, given knowledge by people who came before him. Surely he's better than them because I know who Einstein is and I don't know who they are. No, we're talking so about you know the mean? concept of, when we talk about God, God. You well, cannot the remember Sorry, when, what, how did I start discussing with you about this bike? Yeah, yeah. And you considered immediately like how ridiculous it is to worship this bike. Yeah. And now we went through a process in which we realized the bike cannot be worthy of worship. Why? And we gave reasons. Why? Why? Um, reasons? Um, you can work it out. So we gave reasons. No, no, I'm not engaging with you. Because no, no, I don't, I don't consider, I don't consider. No, no, I don't consider the way you argue is something beneficial at all. Because what you're saying is, my reputable scholars that I follow says God can be depend dependent. Any scholar who says God can be dependent is not a scholar of that caliber. I dispute their scholarship. You know why? You can get a PhD. Let me tell you something. Do you think it's impossible for me to get a PhD or you to get a PhD if you really work hard? Say, huh? Is it really in philosophy? Oh, if you study right. Memory, you if you study it. really meticulously and hard yeah. and you're a bright student, you can get a PhD, right? Yeah. No problem. Yeah. I, mean, I got distinction in masters. I mean, I didn't have to work that hard. So does it make me like you know, I'm a stupid guy or something? No, it makes me a normal individual guy who works like everyone else. But when, if I do a PhD like you do a PhD, okay. it is not impossible. But now imagine now, I get a PhD and I have so much publication and so on. And I say weird things like that, you know what? God can cease to exist just because I have a theory. It doesn't make sense to say this guy is a reputable scholar. You will say, look, he's out of his mind in his logic and argumentation. He's trying to say something which is totally not right. Uh, listen, listen, I don't, I don't, in fact, the logic thing they bring out, oh, logically you can be infinite and finite at the same time. If you bring that logic, I would say, no, thank you. I don't. I don't buy this yeah, logic. You can, you can show to me why that's wrong. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Whereas you haven't done that here. Do you believe that God can be infinite and finite at the same time? From every angle, no. In principle, no. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me, let me, let me sense. start again. In any angle, do you believe God can be existent and non-existent at the same time? No. Well, no, obviously. Why not? Because that defies the law of non-contradiction. Fine. So you abide by the law of non-contradiction. Yeah, so do you believe God can be knowledgeable or loving and ignorant at the same time? Yeah, because those, those, aren't, those aren't contradictory. You see, now he said... Wait, wait, wait. You, all, said, okay, you, said, you said knowledgeable. All knowledgeable ignorant. means... I'm knowledgeable and ignorant at the let same time. Let me explain what I mean. Okay. All knowledgeable means you have 100% knowledge of everything. Yeah. And you're 0% ignorant of anything. Yep. So can you be 100% knowledgeable and 5% ignorant, a being? Not in principle, no. No, 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 in any principle. No, no, because you need to understand what's no, no, no. Like Hang on, hang on, hang on, let me ask you, you again. Can't define terms how you want let me them. ask you again. Okay. In any way, shape or form in your logic that you study in Oxford, yes. can you be 100% knowledgeable, knowledgeable in something and 5% ignorant in the same thing? In any way, shape or form? Yeah. Yes. See? Wait, is he saying, hey, look, if he's saying from every... That's Christian logic. This isn't Christian logic. It is. This is basic definitions. You said in any way, shape or form. Yeah. Like one way, shape or form would be if you apply different definitions. 
right? Is that Are you going to redefine shape? at one point here you conveniently and another? Can, no, no, this is the reason. Well, you said in any way, shape, or form. I'm just going with what you said. You yeah. Said in any way, shape, or form. Sure. One way to give an example. Obviate that problem would be to fallaciously define them wrong way. Now give me an example. Okay, so I define all knowledge as literally knowing everything, and I define ignorance as having a bicycle. Right? It's ridiculous. Hang on, hang on. Ignorance right. as defining what? As having a bicycle, something stupid, right? No, that's not a definition. That's, that's discarded which, in the first which place. Which is literally my when, point. No, that's literally no, my no, point. no. The reason what, when we talk yeah, about this knowledge, is my point, Mansell. look up. As an Oxford student, you should really be more sensible. I am being sensible. No, you're not. Show you how let you me know let me tell you something. When we talk about knowledge, right? Knowledge okay. means what? What does knowledge mean? I, I don't know how you define knowledge. How do you define it? <laughs> you act like that's a basic question. Okay, you do know I know your name? No, Possibly actually. not, because I haven't asked you and what's you didn't tell name? me. Do you know my name? No, what's your name? Yeah, Mansoor. Mansoor, that's me, I'm Rob. Okay, a nice, nice what's meeting. Me? Now, what's your name? Luca. Luca. Rob, what's your name? name again? Rob. Rob. Rob, now I know your name. So in my understanding, in my knowledge base, I have got your name, right? What is knowledge? I'm, I'm, I don't have to discuss exactly, exactly. that. I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to, I'm talking to Rob. So now, Rob, I am aware in my consciousness, in my conscious, that you're called Rob. You go by the name Rob. Now, if I was an knowledgeable being, meaning I do not have any limitation of time, I know your name from eternity to eternity. There is not a fraction of a second in time, in our understanding of time, that I will not know your name. That's what I mean by all knowledgeable. So I will always know your name, like I always knew your name, and I always will ever know your name. So all knowledgeable is knowing all facts forever. No, no, that name of yours, for example, yes. in this instance, yeah. that I will always know. There will not be, when I say all the time means what? No limitation of our past, present and future confinement within this okay. time frame. So when I am all knowledgeable, when God is all knowledgeable of your name, Rob, there cannot be a time in the future when he will be not knowledgeable of your name. That's what I mean by unknowledgeable. Now if I ask you, can the same God know your name and then not know your name tomorrow for 30 second window? Tomorrow, tomorrow at 8 o'clock, yeah, yeah, yeah. he doesn't know your name. Is it possible? It's impossible. Is it rationally possible? To then know my name at all times? No. Be, having Sorry. knowing having knowing your name all the time yeah yeah, yeah well, including yeah, all the time tomorrow, yeah, and tomorrow at eight o'clock in the morning he doesn't know your name that does it make sense what you're telling me makes sense yeah. so so he has to know your name right he cannot not know your name he can't just simply say oh what was your name eight o'clock he says rob bob um tom uh, he can't do that because i would already define by all knowing means he knows it all the time okay so that's what i mean okay. can god be all knowledgeable and ignorant the answer is no. Okay, that's right. Okay, can God be? He says, why not? Can I explain how thank you. Possible? Thank you. I can explain how Go back to Oxford. I'm sure they teach you very well. I don't need to explanation. Can you explain why it isn't? It is possible. Can you explain why it isn't? And he's showing why it isn't possible. And that's very obvious. Right? He's showing that according to the law of non contradiction, you can't have all knowledgeable at any level of ignorance at the same time. Right? And I agree with that unless there is a rectifying factor which then mitigates that difference. Okay, right? show us how you can. So the rectifying factor would be. So in this example, you're the same Rob example. Yeah. yeah. So, no, actually, because. Give that example. We're all talking about God the Son. No, 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 no. Rob, I'm, Rob. I'm keeping it no. relevant. I'm Rob, keeping Rob. Relevant. We want to talk about Rob. It's, it's not analogous. Start with be Jesus. fair. Be start fair. With Jesus and then go to me. I'm not sure I can go to you because it's not analogous. Uh, so that's that's the problem. Right. Because God that's the why Christians try to avoid God the problem they suffer. Christians don't try to avoid anything. That's exactly what he's doing. God the Son is God the Son. No need to. God the Son is God the Son. Possesses all the divine attributes. Omniscience, omnipotence, omnipotence. No, they don't actually. They're different. Okay. So he possesses all those. That's God the Son in principle as God the Son. God the Son, by his omnipotence, can also choose to take on an additional nature. That additional nature is a limited nature by his own free will. He does not, this nature doesn't cease to exist. It's not like when Jesus incarnated for 33 years, God the Son just puffed into an existence, because that would be a contradiction of his nature. Right? He always existed, but he assumed on an additional nature. That additional nature is the one which was subject to limitations, 
by virtue of his own free will of choosing to assume that nature, right? Now, this nature always had the omnipotence, omniscience, all those kinds of things. They still possessed the divine attributes. There was never a time when he was ignorant of all knowledge. That's why, in principle, God the Son still remained omniscient. There was no contradiction. We're not asserting that God the Son, qua God the Son, in his nature, just as it is, suddenly became ignorant, because that would be a logical contradiction. In the same way, we're not saying with the Trinity, for example, that God is one being and yet three beings, or one person yet three persons, because that is a logical contradiction. We are using the same same terms in different contexts, and so they have different parameters under which they're fulfilled. That Go back to Rob. Contradiction. So is it like... You can't apply to Rob, because Rob is not a divine person. Well, is it no, like, so you can't no, 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 no let me tell you why he didn't apply. He cannot go to, to Rob example. Because he knows every nature. single philosopher that he Would studies, philosopher? any philosopher that he would wait, study. Wait, wait, wait. I, might, I might have the connection. I might not do that. Yeah. <laughs> Is it like, okay, so um, I know your name forever apart from tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Because tomorrow at 8 o'clock, I take some drugs and then I can't remember anything. So like, you have, I haven't changed who I am as a person. So, so, but my, like, so when, my we talk about, when you talk about, an, o, when you talk about an unknowledgeable being, knowing, affirming that he knows everything. This is yeah, an affirmation. Okay. That everything included at 8 o'clock tomorrow. Yeah, sure, like, so I can know everything, but Look, if I have some drugs, and then it means I can't... God being drugged by who? He's independent. So, and all I, I, I know, it's not... Yeah, yeah. Analogy, so I'm not yeah. talking about you, I'm talking about God. Uh, so God, so God who is on, God is okay. all knowledgeable, at 8 o'clock, he still knows your name. You cannot say he doesn't know your name at 8 o'clock. Okay. Because he already knows that name. That 8 o'clock is included in his all knowingness. You're right. We right. Agree on that. So now, if you have a God who is dependent for everything on someone else, okay. That's the that God, point. that God is not a perfect God. Wait, Rob, That's what Rob, I'm saying. Rob, Rob. So a I mean, God that is dependent. I'm, I'm confused between me and my nature. Okay, yeah. I, so I'm not God. So I'm not saying that. I'm saying you know between God and and His nature. Because you, you were told about God's is His nature. nature. Is His nature perfect? Is his nature uncaused? Well, I, I, that's what I don't want nature So let me, let me, me, let me tell you. Yeah. We agree God has to be uncaused. Why? This is caused. Again, if, that's an example. If, if, if God... Um, I'm sorry, I cannot really speak with you. You know why? Okay, so I, I actually don't want to interrupt. Sorry, um, I, I don't... Can I, you, say one thing every, 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 yeah, every, yeah, every yeah, principle, yeah. the essential attribute of God, like omnipotence, why? Omniscience, no, no, why? No, no. This is what you're saying. You're questioning something that is essentially an essential attribute of God. Uncaused, okay, okay. being uncaused, not being okay. yeah. caused into okay. existence. Because if you say, look, at one point, he didn't exist and he was caused into existence. Yeah. So was he eternal? Which we don't say that. Was he omnipotent? <laughs> no, of course he didn't even exist. We never said that. So when you question... Yes, Jesus was born as a person. When That's you question, when you question the and caused nature of God, you are saying that means it's possible God was caused. If it's possible he was caused, mean at one point he was caused into existence. Okay. No. So that means there was something at one point he didn't exist. No. By that logic, yeah. By that logic, because that's what you mean by caused. What are you causing to? Causing to come into existence. That's what okay. causation means. So yes. God by definition has to be uncaused, not okay. brought into existence. Yes. Right. Jesus is caused, or the tr Trinity second member is caused by the Father, by their very dogma in their belief. He's caused, he's generated, he proceeds, he's begotten, he's caused. The Father, according to the theme, model of the monarchy, monarchical model, like you try to write, whatever, any model, the Father is uncaused. So now you have a being who is uncaused, and you have someone else who is caused. They are not equal, are they? Someone who is caused and someone who is uncaused. If you say they are the same, I leave the discussion here and you go and study in Oxford and Cambridge and Harvard, whatever. Well, they're okay? The they're not the same. Argued. So, if, so the if they're not the same, the same, are they equal in their nature? Can you be different but equal? No. Yes, you can. When you, go. So if uncaused makes you fitting to be God, can do, cause, you, does a caused nature make you fitting to be God? Wait, man, so I'm gonna head out. So I thank you, say, thank no, you. I'm gonna say something okay. before you leave. Okay, before I leave. Okay, a couple of things. So, he's given an example of dependence with the bike, yeah. right? And he said, why don't we worship the bike? 
right? He's ignored the fact the bike isn't omnipotent, omniscient, omnibenevolent, maximally good, none of these kind of factors. Yes. That's why we don't worship your bike, right? Yes. It's also causally dependent on its existence. It came into existence at a certain time. When we say that Jesus, God the Son, or God the Spirit was caused or proceeds or generates, we never said there was a time zero where he didn't exist and then a time one where he did exist. God the Son eternally exists. Eternally dependent. He, yeah, exactly, eternally dependent. Now, he says, okay, not worthy for worship. dependent shows that he's inferior or less than he can't be God. Okay. But he's never actually shown why dependence is a weakness. And what does he do? He just goes back to the bike again. It's a circular argument. He has to presuppose that dependence is a weakness to make his argument in the first place. Show me philosophically okay. that de dependence is not a weakness. What is a weakness? Well, you know what? Carry on, enjoy. There you are. No, I'll, Thank I'll you, Luca. Now, okay, well, nice to you. I'll chat to you. Anyone, yeah. anyone who says we can, we need to demonstrate that dependency is a weakness. Is someone really out of their mind? Unless they're a Christian, something like that. How can you even want to show dependency and independency? They're on the same footing. If you are self-sufficient, you are not dependent. And if you are dependent, you're not self-sufficient. Do I need to demonstrate that with? with Quantum logic? No, it makes sense. So I'm, I'm a right, thinker, right. So, it takes so, me a while to so the things. reasons why they're arguing and questioning is, look, if I was trained, if I were trained in philosophy and logic, I could have just given him just like that. Why? Because he knows that's the weakness that I am not using the jargon that he's using, and he can only argue on the basis of oh, reputable scholars like the ones he mentioned mentioned this is okay, but we know how weak they are. Why? Because by definition. Any being who is omnipotent has to be uncaused, by definition. All of them, they're all interlinked in their attributes. If you are omnipotent, you cannot be caused. If you are eternal, with no beginning, you cannot be caused. You cannot be other than omnipotent. So these essential attributes go hand in hand together. So the fact that we have found a being called second member of Trinity who is caused, and dependent on the Father, by definition, it's not God. You can call it God, you can call this bike God, some people will do. Some people will call this bike God and worship Him. Some people will call Jesus God and worship Him. But it doesn't make them befitting to be God. Your heart and your mind will know a being who is dependent on someone doesn't befit to be called God. Okay. Can I try and, like, Go example ahead. it? Yeah, yeah. So, like... I've heard this you before. I want to know what your views are on it. Sure. So like, um, uh, let's say uh, I, have a, I have a fish tank. I, yep. I, I, yeah, I create those of fish and I feed them. They're very dependent on me. And then through a science experiment, I make myself a fish and go join them in the fish tank for a while, swim around, have a chat with them, see how they're doing. And like, uh, and then I come back out again. And like, you know, at the end of the science experiment, I come back out and I'm me again. Um, like. So do they, should they worship me because they were dependent on me? And then I became a fish, but then I'm not a fish anymore. If that makes sense. So in terms of like, I want to know what your thoughts are on that. In terms of like, sure. that, is, that is a metaphor for, so this for is, God this and is, Jesus. So this is what happened. Jesus was God to begin with, but I'm questioning that point. Before you became a fish, I'm talking about your status before the fish. Okay. Right, that point, you're not God to begin with. That's what I'm questioning. Because you are demonstrated in your definition as being caused, and dependent on the Father, you are not God. You can call and label yourself, oh, I have a different definition of God. One is called a nominal definition, one is called a predicative definition. You can redefine God to suit your dogma. A Hindu can do that. Okay. Someone who is a polytheist can do that. You know what, I, when I say God, sometimes when I say God, that's the real God, and that's the God actually is not a real God. Uh, it's my predication. No, this is all semantics to get people confused and say actually it's God. But when you question, when you say the son is a god by predication and father is a god by nominal, what's the difference? There is a difference. Okay. There is a difference. Because by predication, for example, you can say, oh, um, this man is God. But actually he's not God, but I call him God by okay. predication. Because he's nice and kind and knowledgeable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you know in reality, in reality, on the fundamental level, okay. yeah, on a pragmatic level, he's not God. Likewise, on a pragmatic level, the Son cannot be deemed in any way God. Because he doesn't have the attributes of God. So if we're the fish, yep. in the fish tank, yep. how do we know that the man who feeds us isn't God? You know, how do you know? How do you know that? Because like, I understand your definition and yeah, I agree with right. it. But I mean, like, how, do you, so how do you know? So you can say, this is how we will eliminate who can yes, be called God and who cannot be God. 
anyone who says, I'm God, but I need to eat to sustain myself, I will say by definition, you're not God. You cannot be God. Some okay. people can call you God and worship you God, but you are not really deserving to be called God. Okay. The real God who is worth deserving yeah. is the one who is one and absolutely unique and self-sufficient, okay. independent, eternal, not produced or producing, and totally um, unparalleled okay. in, equal, in, in terms of power and authority, totally uh, uh, different to everyone else. Yeah. That is something that you will realize that yes, makes sense. So. In the Christian concept, they can bring philosophical things, do PhDs and whatever, and say, oh, there you go, now we've somehow made... Um, okay. um, but it doesn't still go away with the problem. Uh, you I have get, belief in which something is less than God. Yeah, I, I get that. And I, with that logic, I understand what you're saying. But 